What is up? Risk takers! Welcome to the Kill Pete Strategy. I am Pete. I'm a top player in Risk Global Domination. Uh, on my channel here, we talk about strategy, talk about philosophy, talk about game theory. I'm a top Risk player. I like the game of Risk. We missed last week's Map Master Mondays because it was April Fool's. And boy, howdy, weren't some folks utterly, utterly fooled. But we're back on the Map Master Mondays grind. We're taking a look at every single map in the game one by one, putting into a tier list for free for all progressive world on. This is a great map. I'm very happy to present to you on Map Master Mondays. This is Conwy Castle. This is a real castle in Wales, I think. Um, and the normal uh, settings apply. We're doing World on Progressive. We got a six player game. I am the purple player. And this map is awesome. So let's show you what it looks like. I hope purple tries to smack my two and loses. All right. So you have the West Barbican on the left hand side plus two, the East Barbican on the right hand side plus three. You have North Wall across the top plus five. You have South Wall across the bottom. Plus five. You have a four for five of stalls. OP bonus. You have common ward plus four, outer ward plus six, inner ward plus four. And then you have a distributed bonus of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Towers worth plus seven if you can hold it. And he did get that bono and he did roll my two. <sighs> okay, are we playing a bonus game or not, folks? Am I the type of guy to play the I insist on a bonus game on Con... Ah, oh, losing troops is not what you want to see. Ugh. Ugh. Everything. So so my job here, rather than take bonus, is going to be to try and survive in as many positions as possible. Um, I pretty much feel like the left and the right hand side are OP on this map, so... You want to start with one of the Barbicans, if you Barbican. Um, do this one live on Twitch. Thank you, random username 69. Thanks so much. Uh, what can I tell you, folks? There's a lot of pockets. So Conway Castle is one of the most difficult maps to path visually, I'd say. Um, I'll give you an example. So this territory naturally kill guards one, two, Three. And there's a lot of that stuff. This territory naturally kill guards one, two, right? As in, there's no other way to get to it except through it. Green is punching a lot. I don't know what the point of all that was. Uh, super, uh, Sayan Elite says, hey, Pete, you've probably answered the question before, but why do you fly the flag of Bhutan? Well, uh, I am not really pro um, nationalism. I. I identify as a citizen of humanity, so I don't really fly any flag, but if I'm forced to choose, the flag I chose to fly is the one with a dragon on it, uh, because I'd be dragging that flag all over the map, baby. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically what it is, right? I'm not really about anything that divides people from each other. I think the more we start to think of ourselves as one, one human race, the happier we'll all be. One human family. All right, so blue wants the the other Barbican. I've heard you say that, but what about the Welsh flag? Unfortunately, Joe Black, we cannot fly the flag of Wales in risk. So, all right, turn two, Magenta. I would love to have one of these three pockets, I think. Okay, Magenta is kind of insisting on the Barbican as well. So the seven and the eight are going to impact each other, which I like. Use one of those twos. Magenta, use one of those twos. I can bluff like I want to take stalls without taking it. That's a possible line. You put in. All right, that's a pseudo block. Yeah, I need to protect myself. I need to spread out more. Okay, red's going to start coming off to a bit of a lead now that they're not broken. It 
That's a white too. Yeah, I kind of just don't want to be near them. I can avoid it. Okay, their six is locked inside of themselves. This is progressive. So we're, we're doing uh, every map in the game one by one. We're doing a bit of a map analysis on them uh, for a progressive world dom. All right, so this move has a... Oh, I lose another troop. Uh, so this move has a bit of a sneaky play to it, right? I, I want to reduce uh, green a bit. Um, I also want to be here. Okay, now he's just going to hit my two. So that's suboptimal. Looking rough for the PGO. Oh, this man rolls six V4s. Never mind. <laughs> this man rolls six V4s. Green is a hyper aggressive noob. Well, how do we use that to our advantage? Red holds a bonus. Why would you put that? Oh, I see. Will I be allowed to hold 12 territories? Probably not. I think red hits me somewhere now. Unless red puts it in a different place. Okay, so we lose that there. Roll AV4. Roll AV4. I think you roll AV4. Regent is dumb for that split. Just blocking you. All right. Turn three. What are the bonuses? I'll show you again. Quick review. Three on the right, four, uh, two on the left, five on the top, five on the bottom, four, six, four, five, and then split bonus of plus seven of the top. Okay, good for magenta. Uh-huh. Where do you fortify? What are you fucking... What are you fucking trying to do? Let's get really good dice. Get a manual my five. I'm gonna smack the shit out of you. <laughs> Was it set to novice beginner of the filters? It's an open lobby. All players are welcome. <laughs> hope you lose you greedy prick i hope you lose that too yeah bit of rolled 100 percent roll chooses not to all right we're at 19 troops so lose a 3v1 you deserve to lose a 3v1 i've lost two troops on either of my rolls uh-huh You walk us through path building. What do you mean? <coughs> Let's get some good dice now. That's pretty good. Okay. Oh, we have the Joker. We could set early to hold that plus five. It's actually a very good bonus. <laughs> Probably doesn't hold this turn from Magenta. I mean, that's a war they kind of insisted on. White is also fucked. I didn't realize how bad white was. Yeah, green's just kind of dope taking territory. <laughs> he picks off a shitload of Magenta. Look how much board this guy is holding from his fucking aggressive shit. What's the thought process in chaining kills in the early game? Well, you don't want to really chain... You can't really chain kills in the early game. So the way to find the early game in progressive is you have 
uh, the first five turns are the early game. So um, everyone takes their first through fifth card, and then the mid game begins when the very first force trade occurs. So if you're new to progressive, the player in the first seat, once they're holding five cards on turn six, the earliest, we will see a forced trade. So if you're holding five or more cards in risk, you are forced to trade. Don't break me, White. Please don't break me. He doesn't. And the trading sequence goes like this. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen, and then up by five. So the player in the four trade also gets the 20, 25, 30, 35, and so on. So I'm on the eight trade and the 30 trade, assuming everything goes in order. Now, the way you chain kills is if you take a player's kill and they cause you to be holding five or more cards, you are forced to trade in turn, and you get an additional 30 seconds on your clock with which you can use to make more kills. So the thought process behind that is right now, my questions are, is this a bonus game or not? I think it is, and I think there will be haves in this game and have-nots. Red is in the lead. As long as I'm not accosted by Magenta, which I seem to not be, I will be one of the halves. Green is holding very strange plays, holding a lot of territory, so he's going to be generating extra based on that. So my game hinges on how slow red expand, expands. Uh, purple, or er, sorry, magenta and blue are doing a bit of a Cold War thing, blocking each other from that bonus. So I'm sitting at a plus five. If I hold that plus five, like that's only a plus two. If I hold this plus five for even two turns, I'll catch up to red. White is kind of on the ropes. They're already on two. They're already only in two positions. So my job in Conway is to be in as many places as I can be. I think red's just going to take one hit. I'll be allowed to hold a plus five. I'm going to let red be big on the left-hand side. I'm going to shrink green a little bit. I'm going to split between the two. No, I'm going to actually roll that two off. In this way. Um, I'm going to five in the bottom right, bottom left. I like this board position, so I have one position generating plus five, ancillary five stack, three stack not really offending anybody. This position's probably sunk, and I put that sneaky, you saw me make this, I put that sneaky one there. So red's gonna attack down into the red two. Does he, does he roll through? No, you don't roll through your two, that's really, really dumb, don't do that. The odds on three v2s are just so unfavorable. He's gonna hit me is going to hit me and open me back up to hitting him. Cool. I know how to deal with a player who's playing this style. He's expending all of his energy trying to hold board. And it's a big map, but he isn't getting any bonuses. Um, yeah, green's like a... Green's playing like a child, right? He's just pressing buttons. He's expending all of his troops every turn. He's only ones left. Uh, we rarely see this style of play anymore, but it used to be a lot more common, right? The, the, the child level. Yeah, and White's just trying to be in their position that will that someone will allow them to have. What does blue do? Eventually, I want to see either the, the blue 12 hit the magenta 10 or vice versa. He's going to set. That 10's getting smacked. That 10 is getting smacked. Magenta is on the ropes. Ha, ha, ha. Blue sets on the fourth turn, on the fifth turn to take a plus three, folks. This game is not going to last more than eight or nine turns. So the fact that blue, we used to see shit like this all the time. I love it. The fact that blue is willing to trade an early trade, they would be on the 15. Instead, they take the four. So that's already negative um, 11 troops in equity to hold a plus. Then they roll a 10 stack, right? 
Don't do what blue does. Not recommended. I'm trying desperately to be as far away from red as possible, but that ship is going to sail. So I'm, I'm actually spending most of my generation putting stacks elsewhere so I can use them to make kills in the mid game, which is the basically the first and second trading sequences. Now the game can get to late game. Very, usually very little late game and progressive, right? Usually someone can, it, it progresses a lot more like dominoes, progressive world dom than it is like any sort of strategic positioning long-term 1v1. Leech says, I have a sneaky suspicion that purple win the game. Hey, man, <laughs> you know I'm going to try. <laughs> I have a pretty good record on these Matt Master Mondays, so we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out the truth. All right, so the easiest way you address a player who's playing like green, so to get green right now, if I don't hit them, they're going to generate five troops. If I hit four of their territories, they're going to generate three. So this one play pretty much removes all of their advantage, and they go after me. So I'm just going to hit them enough so that now they're only going to get three troops. Eleven is the magic number. Right, way you re uh, reinforce from risk is count the number of territories you control, um, divide by three, round down. You can never get less than three. So if you have twelve territories, you get four. If you have fifteen territories, you get five, and so on. Uh, I'm expecting Green doesn't realize he has cards yet, so we're one turn away from him realizing that, and he's probably going to set and slam me. Can I get this green kill? Can I position it so that he sets and slams into red? That's a fun line of play. Can I all but kill green, have green set in here and smack the shit out of red because he's such a noob? Maybe. You guys want to see if that works? <laughs> That's actually a really fun line of play. One of the things I like to do is I like to try and point my enemies at each other. Um, the other line of play we can attempt is the kill on white. That kill actually doesn't look all that good considering how much material I have to move through. How does the magenta kill look? The magenta kill looks actually quite good. Let's see if they set here. If they do, um, blue might be facing a sue off, which is good. And it looks like I am now up a trade. So instead of getting the eight, I get the 10. Did blue get a card? Blue accidentally skipped. That's another noob play. So, so I'm confident blue's a noob. I'm confident green's a noob. Um, okay, magenta sets, gets the six trade. Does that go into blue? <laughs> Feed me the white kill. Feed me the white kill. Rolls 5v3? No, it feeds me the white kill. Beautiful. 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 Can red get that? Red sets, puts all the troops. One, two, three, four. Split. Hit an eight at the end of the sequence. That's how I would do it if I was red. Then this is green is super easy kill, except for this. Except for this territory that's guarded behind um, red. I have to hit through a red five to kill green, which I don't love. I'm going to go for white, obviously. Unless red goes for green right now. I think Red's just hitting me once. Yep. Cool. We have to trade the Joker. Damn it. Disappoint. Mo.
Can I get green here? Maybe. It's the five that does it for me, right? That stops me from being able to get that green kill. Here's to see if they smack me. Being on five cards puts me in a great position for the late game. I'm also troop lead. Green sets, obviously. Who do they hit? They probably hit me somewhere. That's okay. All right, so green's going to feel really strong. He's going to hit me. Maybe he gets into red, maybe not. Let's see which way this big-ass stack goes. Like a child holding a gun. Okay, hit the 14, hit the 14, hit the 14, hit the 14, hit the... Yeah! Yeah! It's like a child holding a gun. <laughs> that is lovely. That is just lovely. Okay. Poor, poor, poor red. Yes. All right, does blue miss a card again? Blue skipping's actually gonna get, get him second place, I think. Lesson, do not give a gun to children. That is the lesson. Never do it, Broken Moon. Welcome to the chat. <laughs> Never do it. Okay, blue does take a second card. Magenta takes a third card. Okay. Jetta could miss the 4v2. Yeah, you thought something connected that didn't. Oops. I need you to have a third card. Win that. Win that. I want you to win the 4v2. Thank you. All right. Feeds me an extra card. That feels good. Thank you. Red's probably fucking steaming, pissed off at green. I'm going to see some fireworks pretty soon. This is a tricky board to path, guys. So you're going to make sure... To watch me, I might miss split. I might fuck something up. It has happened on Conway a bunch. Um, I can't believe green's so dumb. Was there any way to avoid that as red? Well, you see how I kind of put, I was going to stack here and then I thought against it. Because so I was like, well, green's going to set. Green's going to slam something. Um, I just think, yeah, it's not about things being inevitable. It's more just like, what is the odds of the noob? What does the noob see? What does the noob think? And how can you get yourself in their, their head? Such that it works in your favor. Uh, what do we want? One, two... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and let's work on green now. Feels good. I do love taking a board part. It's very satisfying. Probably the most satisfying part. Frog World Dom. Smacking the shit out of everyone. Hundred percent roll, hundred percent roll. I 
And yeah, blue skipping that card got them second. <laughs> it's like, ha! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> gotta feel good about this one. Yeah, it felt pretty good. That was fun. I hope you found it fun. Well, let's see where it stacks up in the tier list. First of all, let's see. Okay, hold on. Predictions. Green was a novice. Uh, red was a beginner at best. They might have been a novice. Um, white was the best player in this game. Blue was a beginner or novice. Magenta was okay. So I think magenta and white could be intermediates. Let's see. Yeah, magenta was a novice. White was an expert. Blue was an expert. Oh, that skip was not intentional. Interesting. Yeah, and green was definitely not very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, where does Conway Castle stack up in the tier list for Progressive World on? Well, it has a tight say. Do I like Conway Castle more than River Town Advance? No. Do I like it more than Red Sands Fort? No. Do I like it more than Bowhead's Fortress? Yes. So this is where Conway Castle stands. Conway Castle stands uh, in between. It's, it's in the compartmentalized bonus mattering maps, which are fundamentally less good than wide open maps where bonus don't really matter. And fundamentally less good where bonuses do matter, but still open maps. So right, you see the tier list is kind of really starting to take shape. Uh, the S tier are open maps where bonuses don't really matter. The A tier are open ma maps where bonuses do matter. The B tier are uh, closed maps, pocketed maps where bonuses matter, and so on. Uh, the C tier is uh, kind of odd maps or small maps. Um, the D tier is like maps that have something wrong with them. And the F tier, of course hot garbage and i couldn't think of any anything more apropos than bumping alcatraz which is believe it or not folks smg put out a uh, <laughs> a link um apparently after classic uh alcatraz is their second most played map other than it goes it goes classic europe advanced and then albert catraz folks thank you for watching i'm sorry we missed a week but i i figured the the april fools uh joke was um appropriate and i hope you're enjoying the map master monday series folks so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and until next time for all of you on the path to world domination good games and good luck